The security market has always has been a channel for wealth creation, uh, largely because of a, a number of factors. Uh, firstly, it's really the ease of entry into the market. Um, you do not need very, very sophisticated um, uh, a sophisticated approach to, a, to, a, to come to the market. I mean, entry to the market is simple. You basically have to open an account and then you're able to acquire shares. And even in terms of the entry levels, um, anybody can come into the market and acquire a minimum of 100 shares. So the ease of entry is basically one key thing that we've seen uh, has created that, that level of interest. The other one is the ability to create wealth and to have this increase, um, uh, I would say, geometrically. Uh, if you look at the historically the stocks that we've had coming through IPOs, uh, eight out of 10 of them has actually had a capital appreciation right on secondary listing. So somebody would come in at IPO price and within a month or two, they are almost two, 300% up. And, and over time, you find that uh, shares provide an opportunity both for capital appreciation uh, through price growth, and which again enjoys tax benefits in that it's not taxed, and uh, bonuses and dividends. So it's a combination of factors that makes the share more competitive to another investment opportunity. Uh, so that, that, that provides another level of interest. And really when you come into the market again, you're spreading your, your, your wealth across sectors. So unlike putting, say, in a fixed deposit where you're exposed to um, the institution and, and, and the concentration risk that it carries, but coming to the stock market, you are, you're able to build a portfolio across the economic sectors, be it them, manufacturing, telco, banking, across sectors. So your risk is also very, very well diversified. And you then enjoy the benefit of what's going on in all those sectors, as opposed to if you, are, if you have invested in one particular uh, instrument that says related to the, uh, one particular area, the exchange gives you opportunity to enjoy um, the opportunity to enjoy what's going on across the economic spectrum. So, I think those are the things that I've seen um, uh, as excited people and also created the level of interest to, uh, for them to come to the market. And I get the ease of exit, uh, quite rightly put. I mean, today you're in, tomorrow you're able to exit because there's, there's uh, the market is very liquid. It's a liquid asset, so to speak. So all these all tend to support uh, support the stocks as a as a good as a good a good investment opportunity. Yeah. Um, that's a question that I think we've been asked many times. Um, but I think when you're looking at an equity security, uh, it goes through cycles um, on a daily basis. We have volatility in the market, so you could make up, you could make an entry today, and tomorrow your price is down, and, or, and and that way. So what we're seeing is basically a cyclic movement of the market, and that's why you always hear we have got the bears and the and the bulls. Um, so what does that inform you? Uh, when you have a, a bear run, like the one we've just, we're just got coming out of right now, this is the entry point, this is the opportunity. And it is these kind of cycles that are important for this kind of, uh, for anybody to, to create wealth. Because you can imagine if you've just got a, a perennial bull run, when, when, will you, when will you create, when will you make an entry and make an appreciation? Because you'll never, you'll basically be coming in when the market is peaking. But a cycle like this provides an opportunity for those who didn't have a position to come in. So I would say what we're experiencing is, is basically a normal cycle of an, of an equity market. Uh, we're going through a trough, uh, we're going through a, a trough time and we're going to be coming out and going into the, into the peak in a very fairly short while. But what's informing this particular uh, situation right now? Uh, in 2016, the global economy experienced serious challenges out of the um, depreciation of the oil prices. We had a couple of issues around the geopolitical space. We had Brexit, we had uh, uh, the change in the, the US, and our market is now international. So you find a lot of players in our market are, are the foreign fund managers, and hence they take a, they take a view depending on how, what's going on globally. So there was a small, um, what I would call, they, they sort of held back a bit just trying to watch how the global economy would play out. And so that sort of spilled over into the beginning of this year. Uh, we also had the interest rate caps 
that came into place uh, in September, and that again affected our banking stocks. So there were a myriad of issues that, that came in. So what you're seeing is basically uh, a repositioning of the market based on all those factors. Uh, I'm glad to say that uh, we are seeing very good turnovers, very good um, uh, level of interest coming back, uh, because people have seen an opportunity now. Uh, they've basically seen these are low valuation prices, and uh, they're stocking up. So it's, it's really an opportunity that has been created by all these factors. And I think if you look at the fundamentals of the companies trading on the exchange, all extremely strong. Uh, if you look at the economy as in general, the Kenyan economy, all sectors are really doing well. Uh, and so that just uh, taking a view, a forward view of the market, I think it's, um, we'll basically be seeing a, a quick turnaround. So um, <clears throat> we've, over the years, built a very robust equity market uh, that now has almost 65 companies and a, a very robust bond market, um, trading government bonds and corporate bonds. So we are really happy with the, tr the growth and transformation of those two markets in our country. So this has informed our view on how do we then um, increase the product offering for the exchange. So what we did last year, uh, we launched uh, a, de um, a real estate investment trust. And we did the first income REIT uh, that came into the market. And I must say in our assessment, it has been successful in that it trades actively. Uh, the price erosion was not as much. It also just took the effect of the general market decline, but there's a good level of interest. So that was the beginning of our product diversification strategy. So we've started off with that. Uh, this year, we'll be looking at other new products. We are looking at exchange traded funds coming into the market. We're looking at setting up a derivatives market. Uh, we're looking at bringing in other instruments like global depository notes and global depository receipts, which we would then be able to uh, just help an investor have a very diverse portfolio. Uh, and quite rightly put, we, we, we in Africa, uh, other than JAC, which has got a very deep market, Kenya is now taking the second position in terms of product diversification strategy. And I'm glad to say that uh, upon launch of this product, I think, and also the fact that uh, our local institution investors uh, are really familiar with all these products, I think we've got a very good um, opportunity to to make this market extremely international, even as we aspire to be an international financial center. So we have a very clear aspiration around product diversification, and it's part of our key pillar in our strategy, and you'll be seeing a lot of new opportunities coming in. Mm. Public education for us is, is very important. You're quite right. Um, investors have actually Coming during IPOs in a big way, we saw that happening with in 2006 to up to 2008 with the Safaricom issue, and so they're basically short term, and a lot of them take advantage of the capital gains, make and exit. So there's been a bit of a challenge then, and and I do uh, admittedly, uh, it's an area that we have to continuously improve. So public education for us is critical because we want people to to come and invest for the right reasons. So when you come to the market, you take a view, uh, be it medium term, long term. Uh, you're coming in to generate returns. So you must understand all, this, all, this, all these areas. You must understand the, what volatility and movement in share prices does to, to you and, and that kind of thing. So we have taken public education as a very key initiative at the exchange and we're driving this at various levels. So um, on a wider scale, we have a very uh, robust public education program which we partner with the Capital Markets Authority and other partners in the, sect in the, in the, in the, in the sector to just educate the public through forums, through open days, um, media, and, and those kind of things. And then we take this also to a different level, especially in the tertiary institutions and the universities, where we've, we want to educate people how to trade. So we came up, we've got this initiative called the NSC Investment Challenge, which uh, we recently launched for the 2017 edition. And over time, what we're trying to do is educate this future investors or on, on how to share trade. Uh, how, and, and, and that particular challenge is not only focused on the actual trading, but it's also focused on analysis and um, uh, understanding of what shares and, and, and even the sectors on what they are. So the scoring metrics takes into account a lot of discussions that you do, the rationale that you invest in, and, and all this, uh, and the approach you take. 
So we believe that that way we'll, we'll be able to create a culture of people understanding how to invest. Uh, not necessarily that you're coming in so as to make a quick buck and leave. It's about knowing the rationale and, and all that. So we do that at a tertiary level and that's clearly targeted to this future uh, workforce that's just about to come to the market. Now, we also take it at, a, at, a, at, a, at another level with, in, the, in the schools. We have a, a Wednesday forum for schools here where we run a program on, on, the, on the stock market and how they trade. And we believe this, our involvement in, especially at that very basic level, will be able to create that level of interest and, and, and make people understand uh, or the children understand what the share market has to offer at a very, very basic level. And I believe that, that cuts across. And then for the industry, we are engaged very actively in capacity building. So we run a number of sessions here on our products, security trading, um, portfolio management, and, and really a wide spectrum of products. So that even as they go out there to, to advise clients, they're very clear. So investment education, investor education, understanding of investor rights and everything is a very, very key and pertinent issue for us. And we believe that will be able to... to to increase the level of interest. Uh, we've, we have cognizance of technology and what technology can do to revolutionize thinking, uh, given that Kenyans are very, very um, technological savvy, I must say. I mean, if you look at how M-Pesa has revolutionized how we do our, tr uh, our trading and, uh, and, 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 and e-commerce. So for us, we, we are working on introducing an app, and we believe that application, that app once out there will, will have an education uh, segment, it will have a simulated trading platform, and also um, give people information about the market. Uh, and we believe that will even be a wider scale of doing things, in that uh, uh, you, you, you basically can do everything from, from the comfort of your phone, and, and, and that think that will increase the retail level of interest into the market. So it's a wide spectrum of things, and quite rightly pointed, education is what we're focusing on to, to bring in the retail market. Uh, the fund management industry that uh, effectively came, came into a regulatory regime in 2000, uh, 2001 has actually played a major role in the growth of, our, of the stock market and the capital markets in general. Uh, with the guidelines provided by the, by the RBA on the areas that they should invest in, especially uh, the money markets and the capital markets, uh, a lot of what took place between 2000 and 2010 has been largely supported by the local uh, domestic investment pool. So they have played a significant part. They have helped uh, the growth of IPOs uh, coming to the market. They have helped the growth of the corporate bond market. Um, we started the corporate bond market on uh, securitized bonds. Uh, up to last, a few years ago, you could actually have an unsecured bond. It just shows you the maturity of, of the market. So they've played a major role. Um, the current holdings of fund managers in, in, this, in counters in the stock market is good and, and it's very big. Uh, and for us, we believe they, they'll remain a key player. They sort of provide a balance also for the foreigners because foreigners will not be interested in a market that, is, that has no um, exit. So when they come in, they want to be sure that they can exit using a domestic pool. And the fact that we've got a fund management industry that is close to a billion, a trillion shillings in assets that, gives us quite, that, that makes our market very attractive for, for the foreign space. So they've played a very, very major role. And um, I think we're working on other initiatives that can just increase the level, the level of participation. And uh, you'll see a lot, of, a lot of new opportunities coming through to support that particular segment of the, of the investment industry. Mm -hmm. One of the key things we're doing to restore confidence in the market or to strengthen confidence in the market is, is focus on corporate governance of our listed entities. So we have a self-regulatory um, function at the exchange, a uh, fully-fledged self-regulatory function that looks at all the continued listing obligations of these companies and also uh, does a clear assessment of these companies' performances uh, at all levels the financial performance, the corporate governance issues, and um, the, the entire business operation. So we have strengthened that capacity internally. It's now a very independent function that looks at the whole, all the listed companies, all the listed securities, and making sure that uh, they are abiding by the listing obligations. And really the, uh, the, the, the capital markets uh, code of governance uh, uh, 
policies and structures that are been put in place. So for us, that's a key focus. And in cases where we were able to flag issues early, we're able to quickly take remedial measures to, to mitigate that. Um, I think what has happened in the recent past has, um, has, has increased the level of awareness uh, to the public eye, and we're glad with that, in that even now as board members sit, they're very, very certain that uh, the investors are watching and, 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 the, and even the fourth estate and people are very conscious and analyzing their performances and, and, and also directors are being held to account. So I think what has happened is actually um, a, good, a good thing for the market in that uh, the level of openness, the level of scrutiny has gone levels higher. And so our, our function under the self-regulatory division together with the capital markets uh, supervision team I think that, that uh, with, with those two areas of focus or those two teams coming together, we'll just continuously improve the quality of our listed companies and how they carry out the operations and, and ad adherence to best standards of practice. So I can say that going forward, you'll see less and less of this because real action is being taken now. So we have um, a surveillance team uh, that looks at the market uh, on a daily basis. So we, we're able to see any irregular price movements. We're able to assess patterns. Um, we, we, we're able to see whether players are, are actually playing as per the trading rules and really flag those out. So that's, that surveillance um, uh, function has, has really been strengthened. It's very robust. Now, we're, only, we're not doing it at our level alone. Also, the Capital Markets Authority has a surveillance uh, team that looks at the market on a daily basis. So, I can say the, we have not had um, very major instances of, of what you call uh, trading malpractices, like front running and that kind of thing, because of the robust nature. Uh, and the ability of our systems to detect patterns and, and then be able to quickly move in and call for d details and documentation to support your position. So uh, stockbrokers have to really um, comply with uh, what, what, what the rules provide. And the measures and the sanctions are punitive, so they're very, very conscious. So uh, a lot has been done to improve surveillance. Mm. <laughs> well, that's a... Uh, Bit of an interesting question. I think um, I would say, with the global convergence, really we can't we can't protect our market and say it's a local market. No, I think today um, there's no market in Africa that is that that is is sort of protected or, or has some some form of protection uh, against foreigners. I think the foreign activity coming in is good in our view. It's very good uh, because what do they do? They Foreigners, as they, invest in the, as they invest in this market, carry out extremely extensive research on, on all these opportunities. And, and that is very reassuring, even for a, ret a retail investor, that if a foreigner is actually taking an active stake in this company, then I'm certain that the risks have been assessed and it's a good opportunity. So I, I think they provide that, that level of comfort. Um, they give us good turnovers. I mean, the, the, the kind of capital sitting out there is huge. And, and that's very important for the growth of our market. So coming in is good, but we want to encourage the local uh, retail and institutional investors to also increase or provide that counterbalance. Because again, the foreign, um, as, as, you, as you saw in 2008, if, if there's a, a major global financial crisis, then again, our market is vulnerable to that risk. Uh, so we need, we need to create a balance between two. My ideal situation will be to have a 50-50 um, investor participation, both foreign and local, and, and that, that Right now we are at about 70-30, uh, and that is that's 70 foreign, 70 foreign 30, 30 local, foreign. yeah. And, and that, is, um, that is something we need to work on aggressively to create that counterbalance. Because also foreigners will only come if the local market is deep. In other words, if they're able to exit, uh, then you'll see better capital flows coming in. And what, what that will do is it'll just increase our turnovers, it'll increase the number of companies who want to list because they can see the liquidity is good, they can see, um, it just informs them that the investment structure is good in the, in, in the country, and the investment climate is good. So we think increased turnovers from foreigners coming through is a highly positive thing uh, for the growth of the market. For us as NSC, I mean, um, we want to just 
uh, encourage investors to look at the stock market as, as a great investment opportunity. Uh, especially if you're coming into investment life for the first time. Um, you'd, you don't, you'd probably not have the capital to acquire land or some other asset, but you, really, for this particular market, you don't need much money. I mean, your share is currently trading at uh, one or two shillings a share. So with as little as 200 shillings, you can become an investor in this market. So stocks provide uh, an attractive investment opportunity. Uh, this is a very, very attractive time to buy stocks. Um, we always tell Kenyans, do not buy stocks when they're rising. Buy them when they're going down because this is where you, these are the entry points. So our message out there is that investors should look at the market. We have got a very strong economy in Eastern Central Africa and in Africa as a whole, we are among the top five. We've got very good securities coming into the market. Um, uh, and really, uh, I, I, can, I can only uh, still say that um, take advantage of the opportunity while it's still there.